I'm Malin. I'm Huixin. And I'm Raquel. Before we begin the lesson, let's look at the learning objectives of the day. By the end of this video, we will learn the definition of limiting reagents and how to perform calculations involving limiting reagents. Let's begin with an analogy. One fine evening in McDonald's. Ba -ba 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 -ba! Welcome to McDonald's! Hello! I would like to order three fishy burgers for my friends. Okay, sure. Hello, three fishy burgers please. Okay, order coming up. Hmm, to make one fishy burger, we will need two bread and one fish. Okay, two, four, six bread and two fish. We have six bread. Hmm, so yes, we can make three burgers. Oh no! We do not have enough fish! <sighs> I'm sorry, we are short of one fish. We can't make three fishy burgers. Ah, then how many can you make? I have six bread and two fish. So we have enough bread, but not enough fish. Oh, so the fish is the limiting ingredient. So, what does it mean by limiting? The limiting ingredient, as mentioned by Oliver earlier, relates to limiting reagent in chemistry. Let's demonstrate this concept with a work example. Two moles of magnesium was burnt in three moles of oxygen. Find the number of moles of product formed. We have learned that when magnesium burns in oxygen, magnesium oxide is formed. Here is the word equation. Magnesium metal plus oxygen gas gives you magnesium oxide. Let us write down the corresponding chemical equation. A balanced chemical equation is important in mole calculations as we often need to compare the actual molar ratio with the stoichiometric ratio of the reaction. Looking at the equation, the left-hand side must be equal to the right-hand side due to the conservation of mass. Thus, we will balance the equation by writing 2 times of magnesium and 2 times of magnesium oxide. In this reaction, 2 moles of magnesium react with 1 mole of oxygen molecules to form 2 moles of magnesium oxide. Now looking back at the question, there are 2 moles of magnesium being reacted with 3 moles of oxygen. So how many moles of magnesium oxide will we get? Using atoms as representation, one magnesium atom represents one mole of magnesium. So here we have two magnesium atoms and three moles of oxygen molecules. Hmm, this looks similar to the burger recipe, isn't it? We have the fish representing the magnesium and the bread representing the oxygen molecules. Remember the McDonald chef couldn't make three burgers as he didn't have enough fish? Similarly, two moles of magnesium can only react with one mole of oxygen molecules to form the ionic compound magnesium oxide. We have an excess of oxygen, but we do not have enough magnesium to form more magnesium oxide. Thus, magnesium in this question is a limiting reagent. Let's look at how we will present our working. From the equation, 2 moles of magnesium will react with 1 mole of oxygen gas. We need to find out the number of moles of magnesium required for 3 moles of oxygen gas. From the equation, magnesium and oxygen gas react in a ratio of 2 is to 1. Hence, we need 6 moles of magnesium for 3 moles of oxygen gas. Likewise, for 2 moles of magnesium, we will need 1 mole of oxygen. Since 2 mole of magnesium was used instead of 6 mole of magnesium, oxygen gas is in excess and magnesium is the limiting reagent. We can use the ice table to sort out these information. We will first write down the initial number of moles for each reagent, followed by the number of moles reacted and produced under change. So 2 moles of magnesium and 1 mole of oxygen has reacted. Thus, for magnesium oxide, 
0 mole plus 2 mole will give us 2 mole of magnesium oxide. So here we have the definition of limiting reagent. Limiting reagent is the substance that is completely used up at the end of a chemical reaction. The amount of product form is limited by this reagent. The leftover substances in the reaction, such as oxygen in the earlier question, are known to be in excess. Let's try more questions. In a closed container, 4 moles of nitrogen gas reacted with 9 moles of hydrogen gas. Determine the number of moles of ammonia gas formed at the end of this reaction. Remember, we will need a balanced chemical reaction before making comparisons with the actual mole ratio. From the question, there are 4 moles of nitrogen gas and 9 moles of hydrogen gas. So how many moles of product will we get? From the equation, nitrogen and hydrogen gas react in a ratio of 1 is to 3. Hence, we will need 3 moles of nitrogen gas for 9 moles of hydrogen gas. Likewise, for 4 moles of nitrogen gas, we will need 12 moles of hydrogen gas. Since 9 moles of hydrogen gas was used instead of 12 moles, nitrogen gas is in excess and hydrogen gas is the limiting reagent. Once again, we can use the ice table to sort out this information. We will first write down the initial number of moles for each reagent, followed by the number of moles reacted and produced under change. So 3 moles of nitrogen gas and 9 moles of hydrogen gas has reacted and 6 moles of ammonia is produced. From this video, we have learned the definition of limiting reagent and how to perform calculations involving limiting reagents. Thank you for teaching me the concept of limiting reagent. I'll be more careful next time.